Today is time and date. I wanted to do this before, while well, it's still the uh, July the 4th, so 2020, right? And so this is, uh, this was filed with the courts on the day that they saying that I didn't appear, I did appear and I filed it and I handed it over in person, in the flesh, and I would like to go down through it. And I did not even sign it because they said, I went in with a, uh, told them I would give them my finger, I wanted to give fingerprints, sign it, so then make it all official and everything. And they said they don't care. So they just took it. And I handed it straight to Judge Stewart. And I he could have looked down through it. And uh, I, he just passed it over. So this is the authorized, authorized representative is Robert James Harton Jr., right? And this is in the real world, right? And this is not the land of fiction. This is non-domestic, right? It's private property, no trespassing, right? And they were supposed to, they hand, I handed it over to them, and they were actually supposed to uh, fill it, to get it, record it, sign it, and return to, right? That's what it says there. It says it right there. And I have not, re, I have not seen them sign anything or record anything. However, they did record it at this, in this level here. Okay. Affidavit of sovereignty to be entered into the court of records. Equality under the law is paramount and mandatory by law. Notice to agent is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Obligations are at obligations are applicable applications to all successors and uh, and assignees. All are without excuse. Okay, so. Again, my name is Robert James Harton Jr., and I am the uh, the authorized representative for the legal fiction that I will get into. And uh, so, this says, I, Robert James Harton Jr., a titled and entitled sovereign, a man of a am a beneficiary of the preamble and a constituent member of the posterity as outlined within the constitutional trust and expressed which is an express trust via via jus and queens uh, the right of blood hereby declare that i am not a subject a slave a suspect a servant a debt slave, a ward of the state, a ward of the court, owned by any earthly entity, an enemy combatant of the state, a 14th Amendment corporate citizen. I do seek only truth, justice, life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. I am only willing, competent, and capable of to manage all of my own affairs. This is my affidavit. This is my me speaking my truth, and it is up to the courts or any opposition to be to to notify me of anything that I, I have said wrong in here and correct the error. It says I do not live, dwell, reside, linger, languish, lo loiter, nor do I operate, whether mentally or physically, inside the corporate government quasi-public corporation created, designed, and induced land of fiction, aka the American dream, ruled by legal presumption and legal assumption. I am the attorney in fact for, home, for the homo stramineus, the straw man, and the corporate liability doing business as Robert James Harton Jr. or Harton Robert James, including but not limited to any and all other variances deviation and or variances thereof applied to my physical being. I hereby cancel, revoke, rescind, and make void all pledges, all allegiance, all promises, all oaths, all obligations, and all signatures that I have been manipulated and or co coerced into signing, and that is re related to or deemed associated with, with the intentionally and deceptively designed ambiguous grammatical construct, a.k.a. the straw man, 
bearing any resemblance, whether exact or otherwise, to the true name given to my physical, eh, I realize I, I didn't, my physical being, screw that up, at birth, or my physical being at birth, but I should burn, and perverted, and perverted slash converted into a legal form of identity theft. In order to be financially capitalized upon, nuns pro tons, that means from the beginning. So from the beginning, if, uh, if you understood anything that I just said, it said, I hereby cancel and revoke and any, all pledges, allegiances, and everything that I was manipulated into believing or thought that was the real and all that kind of stuff in that name of that straw man and that legal fiction, which had, has kind of trapped me into this all of this nonsense so I, I want to relieve myself of that so all other entities are either unwilling or and or too incompetent to manage any of my affairs therefore they are all hereby fired that means all corporate all state corporate fictions a sovereign like myself cannot be tried in their own court by any entity except a living, breathing, physical being of flesh and blood seeking compensation for damages. The signature of the co commercial debt slave operating under threat, duress, and coercion who looks, who looks like something like this, and I was going to put this squiggly. However, so there, here's a fact. The signature of the debt slave looks like a big squiggly mark. However, the autograph, the autograph of the living soul operating in willful consent will look like, and I, I, I was going to put my real, uh, my real autograph. Okay. I do not consent. So next point. I do not consent to accepting any compelled benefits. Next point. I am endowed by my Lord and Creator certain self-evident and unalienable rights which are all essential limitations applicable to all corporations and governments. These unalienable rights are not transferable or capable of being taken away or nullified. My rights include but are not limited to one the right to act in self-defense in every aspect, respect, uh, nature, situation, and uh, scenario. Two, the right to own and control private property, land, money, personal items, intellectual property, etc., free from being registered with a corporate state, free from being trespassed upon and or unwarrantedly leaned against by both corporate and government entities. My, I have the right to work and enjoy the fruits of my labor. I have the right to move and travel freely and unfettered within this country and or another country. I have the right to worship or refrain from worshiping any freely chosen God or religion I feel. I have the right to be secure from intrusion or invasion in the place where I am staying, living, or domicile. Well, right there, they, they, this was back in September the 30th, and here, uh, here June, they, they go and they invade on my, intrude and invade on my mother's house looking for me. Uh, I have the right to exercise all of my constitutional rights at all times without seeking permission or licensing from any, any and all corporate or government entities. I have the right to be treated with dignity and respect by all principals and agents of all corporations and any or any all corporate and or government entities. I have the right to own, keep, and bear arms, weapons concealed on my physical being for my own self-defense and self-preservation. I have the right to due process, to confront and face my accusers in the court and all other venues in all manners in all matters whether it be public or private notice the public is the all caps right the private is 
distinct difference and people need to know this and re recognize this and this is why they're so screwed and this is why they're trying they tried their desperate uh, attempt I believe to uh, to try to get me out so they could kill me so they don't have to deal with all of this in which I've already put into their court and which has been uh, you know uncontested I mean it stands and as far as I know it is that's what it, uh, affidavit of truth is a fact and as long as it's not rebutted, then it stands as fact in court. So I don't know what the hell they think they're doing if this was put in a court and I can go there. And it was a little while back, yeah? Okay, so. So I have the, uh, the right to be treated as innocent until proven guilty. Here, they're doing the exact opposite. They have the presumption of guilt with bullshit, and they've already treated me as if I was guilty. When you saw it, it was with just beliefs, right? And then I even put a counterclaim, and all they had to do was it was uh, argue that counterclaim. However, they didn't, so I guess that's I guess I just won there. And here's another fact that they've all backed away, so they left the uh, the fight, they left the battle, so to speak, right? And that's how it works in court. They they all stood down. They they all just ignored everything. They all they all went afoul, right? So I have the right to exercise my Fifth Amendment, stand mute at all times. Well, this is what I was going, what I was doing outside whenever they didn't like it because they said that I had to stay, stand there. Encompassing all venues, matter, manners and matters, with it, whether it be private or public. I have the right to be advised of, of the charges and the reason in the event of arrest. However, I'm not. I have the right to association with or disassociation from any person or group that I feel. I have the right to express any idea through print, voice, banner, and or other media. I have the right to be tried by a jury of my peers, and that, that would be hard because the 95%, 98% of the public most likely don't understand most anything that I'm talking about. Peers, to face the injured party claiming damages and any all witnesses against me. Article 3 of the Sixth Amendment. Okay, uh, the right to change. I have the right to change my plea at any time before trial. I have the right to be free from suffering and, or enduring any cruel or unusual punishment, which apparently uh, I'm suffering at this point. Uh, I have a right to establish, monitor, control, record, and petition my public servants employed by the people and working in government to secure my rights. And I've done that many times, and uh, I, they just ignore that. And so what it boils down to is if Brett Ligon goes and works for the cops, so they work together, Brett Lagan is the brains behind the operation. So if there's any, if the cops are sitting in any position where they're like, hey, what's the law on this? What are, what's our move on this? Do you think we can make it through and make some money on this? They're going to call Lagan's office, and Lagan's going to tell them whether or not to move. And if he thinks that he can get it through the court, because there's all, uh, you know, it's all handshakes and shit behind. So. The right to abolish my government if when if slash when it becomes destructive of my rights right? and that's what I'm currently doing I've abolished I mean it still stands and all that kind of stuff but what I'm saying is I'm not in in their system anymore I uh, the state means absolutely nothing to me and they're nothing more than a liability in every manner and so I'm not interested in getting, I abolish them from my life, right? They're destructive to my rights, they're destructive to me, and so therefore, they can piss off. I, I want nothing to do with them in every aspect, in every respect, and to prove it, I will leave the country and never come back, if that's what it takes, right? Just to get a little bit of respect, right, for what I what I believe in, and to be able to, to uh, walk in. So... You know, okay, so uh, the right to be informed of the nature and cause of an alleged crime. That's the Sixth Amendment, right? And in here, I'm not. They're, they're treating me, they, this went in, and then they just they act like the whole thing is a joke, right? Uh, the right to be the judge. 
No, the right to put the judge, the banking administrator, on notice of my intent to preserve all of my rights. The right to have legal counsel for my defense. The right to waive legal counsel and represent myself proper and uh, free from the personal restriction imposed upon the bar's attorney. Propria persona. Uh, the right to object to any statement by the judge, or the banking administrator, and because he's not a judge. See, a judge is only in a common law courts, right? A judge goes be in real with real people. And banking administrators that are acting as judges, banking administrators, they in the military martial law courts, and all they're interested in is money. And you're an item to them, right? You're merchandise. And, they, and because that's what it is, that little ID. And so... Uh, the right to recluse, dismiss the judge. I have the right to call witnesses to assist my defense, even though they know everybody acts like I don't. So they won't put it in writing that I don't have the right. However, every person will, will walk and work with them as if I do not have the right, which is why I would gladly leave the country because, in other words, all the people that are my so-called quote-unquote countrymen or persons or, you know, well, that's why they call them person. And that's why they use person because they don't want, they don't want to establish man and woman. They, there's a, uh, that is, that is nature, right? And they don't want that to have anything to do because if they did, you become liable now, right? You become morally obligated if you're dealing with real men and women and they're not dealing with men and women. They're dealing in a way in which they're like, you should be smart enough to know it's not our fault that you're dumb, and it's not our fault that you're a sucker, and you're the one who's sitting here signing everything. It's all messed up. The right to require translation of any citation of, of evidence, law, or procedure into plain layman's in term English. The right to submit motions in court. The right to... In the name of self-preservation, record, audio, video, written, email, and any other formats, report, and make admissible in court, in the court of records, as evidence. All conversations, all interactions, all transactions, all arguments, all discussions, all debates, and all intercourses. The right to put the judge, the bank admit, on notice of my intent to appeal any ruling. The right to a speedy and fair trial by an impartial jury. That has already been, and it's almost like, what, 10, ten months now? The right to waive court and transcript costs by pleading in forma papyrus. Paris, okay, uh, the right to due process of the law, jury trial, before I am deprived of any liberty, property, or money. The right which, to protest and object if any of my rights or demands are not being met. The right to challenge the jurisdiction of any and all courts. The right to inform the jury of the truth, their rights, and their obligations. The right to demand that the code be construed in harmony with the common law. The right to personal liberty under the 13th Amendment. The right to demand that the court place into evidence any and all unrevealed contract, statute, law, code, rule, or any, or any all information being used against me. The right to challenge all relevant laws in this trial in terms of their intent, interpretation, their fairness, their enforcement, and whether they serve or, and protect the people of your state of fiction. The right to argue of recourse and remedy under UCC Uniform Commercial Code 103 and uh, Uniform 203. And so then consistent with the eternal tradition of natural common law unless i ha have harmed or violated someone or uh, or their property i have committed no crime and i am therefore not subject to any penalty thus be it known in the nature of the uniform commercial code one 
308 old 1-207 that I reserve my natural common law right not to be compelled to perform under any contract that I do not enter into knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally. Furthermore, I do not accept the liability associated with the compelled and pretended benefit of any hidden or unrevealed contract and commercial agreement. As such, the hidden or unrevealed contracts that supposedly create obligations to perform for persons and subjects status are inapplicable applicable to me and, app, and are null and void. If I have participated in any of the supposed benefits associated with these hidden contracts, I have done so under duress and for lack of any other practical alternative. Any such partition any such participation does constitute acceptance in contract law because of the absence of full disclosure of any valid offer and voluntary consent without misrepresentation or coercion under contract law without any val without a valid voluntary offer and acceptance knowingly entered into by both parties there is no meeting of the minds and therefore there is no valid contract any supposed contract is therefore void ab initio and so there is no so this is covering contracts everything there's no meeting of the minds it's all slavery this is this is pushing me, compelling me, you got the guns, sign here, and, uh, and I, everything that I signed was uh, no contract, and under duress is what I put, all rights reserved. And so, typical example of such compelled and pretended benefits are, but not limited to, a birth certificate. With, and the fact that a birth certificate was granted to me by a local hospital or government agency when I entered into this world is irrelevant to my sovereignty. No status, high or low, can be assigned to another person through a piece of paper without the recipient's full knowledge and consent. Therefore, such a piece of paper provides only hearsay date and place information only. It indicates nothing about jurisdiction, nothing about property ownership, right? So no title, it, it, at no title that can be transferred in their state title which they believe that they own that birth certificate in in the person who signed for it nothing about rights and nothing about subject status the only document that can have any legal meaning as it concerns my status in society are those which i have signed as an adult with full knowledge and consent free from mis representation or coercion of any kind my birth certificate the warehouse receipt will be redeemed accepted for value and you cci one filing signed received and recorded by the united states department united states treasury united states department of justice united states secretary of state as well as their president of the United States Corporation, and therefore none will be able to assume or presume that they in fact hold any claim to either my straw man nor to my flesh and blood physical. That is a trans transmitting utility, that straw man is a transmitting utility. The use of uh, an identification number from the government agency, the, the, normal, the number normally assigned to, a per, to persons which were of stat, subject status, which was straw men, I use exceptionally under duress only because of the extreme inconvenience of operating without one in today's marketplace where it is requested by banks, employers, lenders, and many other government agencies and businesses. My reason for using it is not because I wish to participate in the system, as I don't wish to participate. Let it be known that I use this number assigned to me for information only, if at all. And the use of a uh, fiat currency, Federal Reserve notes to discharge my, discharge my debts. 
I have used these only because in this country there is no other widely recognized currency. The use of a bank account with my signature as the bank signature card on the bank signature card. If there is any hidden contract behind the bank signature card, my signature there on gives no validity to it. The signature is only for verification of identity. I shall be obligated to fulfill no hidden or unrevealed contract whatsoever ever due to the absence of full disclosure and voluntary consent. Likewise, my use of a bank account thereof is due to the absence of a bank not associated with the central bank system. In general, people have been prevented from using their own currencies and such prevention is in violation of the national con national constitution where there is an alternative i would be happy to use it to not use any bank at all is impossible or very difficult as everybody knows in today's marketplace past tax returns filed any tax returns I may have filed in the past were filed due to the dishonest atmosphere of fear and intimidation created by the tax collector in the local assessor's offices, not because there is any law requiring me to do so. Once I discovered the tax agencies are lying to the public, I have felt it is my personal duty to, to society to determinate my voluntary participation because such returns were filed under threat, duress, and coercion, and no two-way contract was ever signed with full disclosure. There is, n there is nothing in any past filing of returns that created any valid contract. Therefore, no legal obligation on my part was ever created. And, quite frankly, if this is not true, then all somebody has to do, all of these geniuses, the they... Brett Lagan is the district attorney, been for years. All he has to do is, is tell me, dude, you're an idiot. Like, yeah, and, and just get to work, buddy, right? You see, they, they were looking for a free meal ticket. They were hoping this would be a win-win-win, right, in every direction for them. The use of the driver's license as a free sovereign, there is no legal requirement for me to have such a driver's li uh, license for traveling in my car, as technically the unrevealed legal purpose of driver's license is a commercial in nature. Driver's license, you're accepting commercial. You're entering the road system as a person that's entering into commerce, and they eventually, they got everybody into that system. And, and I agree with the system. If you are in commerce, like if you're a trucker and you spend all day using the, uh, these highways and byways for your own, for, uh, for commerce to make money and profit and get rich and all that kind of stuff, well, then you need to, you know, get into that system, that you know, commercial system and get a driver's license and get insurance and do all of that kind of stuff. Because you're making a shit ton of money and pay your taxes, right? But if you're not and you just uh, and you got a vehicle, you have every right to get in that vehicle and travel, right? So, in other words, and they're like, "Well, we need to." It's a safety matter. No. When I I got my driver's license when I was 16, and I've never had to take another test since, right? Well, that's that's not necessarily safe. However, what my point is is there could be there could be a, a certificate that proves that you are li you are capable of driving, which gives you some sort of liability, obviously. But in the way in which they're doing it, no. So, so uh, the unrevealed legal purpose of driver's license is commercial in nature, right? Because that's a fact. Since I don't carry passengers or freight for hire, there is no law requiring me to have a license to travel for my own pleasure and that of my family and friends. However, because of the lack of education of police officers, because they're goddamn psychopathic nut jobs, right? And that's what, yeah. on this matter, should I be stopped for any reason and found with, to be without a license, it is likely I will be harassed, if not like really destroyed uh therefore under duress i carry a license if you want to avoid extreme inconvenience this is all under duress 
it's all out of fear. It's all, uh, and so you guys call that freedom. Do what you want with it. Call it whatever you want. It's disgusting, and I, and I want nothing to do with it. And uh, today is July the fourth. State plates on my, similarly, even though uh, technically my car does not fit the legal description of a motor vehicle, which is used in commercial purposes, nevertheless, I have registered it with the state or, and, and carry the plates on it because I have not, I have, because to have any other plates or no plates at all causes me such a risk of a police officer harassment, extreme inconvenience, declaration of citizenship. This is a big um, any de document I may have ever signed in which I answered yes to the question, are you a United States citizen, cannot be used to com compromise my status as a sovereign, nor obligate me to perform in any manner. This is because without a full written disclosure of, of the definition and consequences of such a supposed citizenship, provided in, any, in a document bearing my signature given freely without misrepresentation it, there's never been one without mess and coercion there can be no legally binding contract I make no allegiance to any earthly government I am neutral to all I have no allegiance to United States at all as they have proven to me that they there's not a single person in the United States that has any allegiance to me and nobody feels obligated and not even to to even answer a simple question so they can all go to he double hockey six past voter registration similarly since no obligation to perform in any manner was ever re revealed in print as part of the requirements for and let's just put it this way I'm not going to vote because it's a joke and I want nothing to do with it. So, blah, blah, blah. Marriage license. Let's put it nice and make it nice and easy. I will never get married as far as the state is concerned. I will get married in my own free time and, and the state can kiss my ass. Uh, children in public school. Um, I will never have a child in this country. And, uh, and if I did, even if I did, they will not be going to public school for the most part. You know, like, there's maybe a little bit, but uh, it's going to be very touchy subject. And I'm going to try my, most part, I don't want any of these scumbag teachers, anybody in the public touching my kids and fucking their brains up. i got to be honest, Okay. Uh, use of semantics. There are some immature people with mental imbalances, such as the, such as the craving to dominate over other people, who masquerade as government, just because they alter definitions of the word in law books that, to their supposed advantage, doesn't mean we have to accept this definition. The facts that the, the that they define the words person, address, male, resident, you know, passenger, employee, and uh, many others in ways different from the common usage so as to associate with the subject or slave status means nothing in real life. It's, uh, it's, it's nothing but a game, people. These are legal societies, and as long as you want to participate in that legal society, feel free. Go ahead. I, I want nothing to do with them because they're, uh, in my opinion, they're they're worthless to me because the courts have become entangled in the game of semantics and that's all that they waste their time be it known to all courts and all parties that if I ever sign any document or spoke any word on record using words defined by twists in the law books different from the common usage there can be no effect whatsoever on my sovereign status in society how thereby nor can there be a created be created any obligation to perform in any manner, be the mere use of such words, where the meaning in the common dictionary differs from the meaning in the law dictionary, it is meaning of the common dictionary that prevails, because it is more trustworthy. So, 
Passport. My use of a passport is completely against my will. According to United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, in which was created by the members of the Human Rights Commission, in which Eleanor Roosevelt was a member and therefore sat on the chair, Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human states that everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. And everybody, everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and return to his country. So, however, this isn't my country, because that is not the fact, right? So, I am nothing more than a slave. However, like anything created and established by the de facto United States Federal Corporation, Article 13 is unrecognized, therefore just another complete fraudulent deception and contradiction. Therefore, as a debt slave with no other alternative, I need a passport, be it known to all. Such compelled benefits are only through, um, you know, and I, I do them, and i trying to fully reserve all of my common law rights as they are trying to have me get rid of them, and it's a constant game, and uh, there's quite a bit more. The United States has no constitutional capacity to exercise municipal jurisdiction, and sovereignty, or eminent domain within the limits of a state or elsewhere, except in the cases in which it is expressly granted. And then I uh, get rid of all and I'm not going to read any more of this but uh, I will say be advised if there is no proper properly signed point for point rebuttal to this affidavit in writing within 30 days then tacit agreement via acquiescence will will be established and considered legal consent, therefore, by, be, therefore, the order of law and this entity will revoke all and any further future attempts to proceed in any legal faction against the sovereign stated and named Robert James Harton Jr. within this affidavit. Sworn and signed, and I was going to sign that in front of him, they said, ah, oh, that, that, that doesn't matter because they have probably already had, they already knew that they were just going to turn around and, uh, and issue a warrant anyways as soon as I walked out. And in actuality, my mother was sitting out there, and, and after I walked out, or I, I handed all these in, I asked who the, uh, who, the, who the state was, and the judge, Stewart, or a uh, banking administrator, uh, Stewart pointed behind me. I looked around, and it was a black girl and a Hispanic girl, and they so they're the district attorney, and they thought they were funny, and they were like smiling and waving at me. And those same girls were laughing whenever they were leaving the court after I handed this all in. So, and my mom saw it, and whenever I came out, she said, "You know those girls?" I said, "Yeah, those are the uh, district attorney. That's the state." And she said, oh, that's funny, because they were just laughing, like, like kind of hysterical. Like, there was a funny thing that just happened as they were walking out, as I just handed these over. And it was probably because they already had, like, oh, this stupid idiot, watch, watch how we handle his stupid ass. Okay, so, it is a pretty much, uh, you know, nobody has, nobody's, there's nothing inside this court that says that any of this is wrong so and here's the order removing the attorney wise motion to withdraw as counsel so was Darren J. Ray 
Rob, and then this time he has Robert Harton Jr. And then here's what's weird. So this was uh, this was October the first, the next day. Right. Remove Darren J. Ray as the attorney, the judge presiding. See, notice they don't have the name, so I wouldn't know exactly what that is. Why? And and they that should be illegal. There is no reason that it should not be Keith Stewart. Full name, and in every case they're doing this. So what has happened here with this here is failure order to motion to withdraw. Okay. So motion to withdraw as counsel. Now Darren J. Ray, attorney for Robert James Harton, that's not the same now. They, they lost the junior. However, right? So now he's talking about a different person. Because here, with the notice of representation, he has it as Robert James Jr. Harton. Right? And here, accused citizens request. There's actually two cases that are open. There is, there is this one, 33, and then there's this one, 32. Right? And then that's why there is, that's why the two, there is Bill Harton. Right? They made it up because they need the second, they need another straw man to do, uh, to screw me twice. Right? And uh, it's a long story, but I, I know how they're doing. So, so now we'll get, so there's that. Same day. Notice of representation. He lied. He said that he needed. He, I've never met the guy, I'd never talked to him, blah, blah, blah. And that's all a lie. And this was, uh, this was like five days after I was released from jail for, a, for another lie. So everything that they've been doing is a lie. And here's a fact, is that this was done at 401. It was done in 401 accused citizens. So it makes sense of this. Uh, this is such garbage. This 401. And then 410. Okay, so. You have at 410, you get a number that's lower than at 401 when you entered it. At 401, you had you had a, a bigger number, right? and then nine minutes later, you go you're going backwards, right? which that doesn't make any sense. However, then they just get rid of this one, so you never see this number again in the whole thing. However. It didn't come back. I mean, they, they did it within nine nine minutes, and nobody came back and just put a, like a big void across this. Why? Because they got that that straw man that thing there. They don't have to. Okay, so so you got him with the this Darren J. Ray, and here's another thing: is that uh, they won't. I I sent stuff to this email. And uh, in Brett Ligon, the district attorney, won't take anything that I send here and stick it into the records. So all of that I sent, all of the emails that I sent, everything that I've been sending, I kept telling them to enter it into the record, and they refused to enter everything into the record. Right? And that's a fact. Okay, so, and then this... They, uh, they tried to get me to, what, before I left jail, they tried to uh, coerce me into signing, accepting 
custody for the, the straw man, because it's in all caps, right? And uh, undersigned farther accepts responsibility for this, and they lose the James on this one. Every time, every I have a name. I have an exact name. And these assholes can't ever get it straight. Okay? And then even with their their uh, their people here, it's rescinded as the releasing deputy. And it turns out that this guy, he uh, I told him to give me every record. So so I entered this into the record. This was not entered, and this should have been every record that was in jail that they wanted me to sign. I signed this, and I said no contract, and that's how all of them are signed, right? And uh. Show you here. So, like here is one. This was the uh, this is the bond, the literal bond, and they're calling it a cash bond, right? But it wasn't. And then they say that it was cash, and it wasn't. It was a cashier's check, right? And James Dodson, the the sergeant of uh, the jail staff, I made him put his fingerprints on it. So I wasn't signing anything until he was signing his stuff and put his, that's his thumbprint. This is my thumbprint. And every one that I signed, it said I put under duress, all rights reserved. Now that means something. And look here, witnessed by agent of, of Montgomery, agent for Montgomery County. This was never, this was never signed properly. So it's null and void. Unless you want to say that his signature is here, and that was signed, but it fucking belongs down there. Excuse me, right? It's so it's so frustrating. The, they they can do whatever they want to lead into all of this chaos and confusion and stuff. I got an idea. That would be no different than me taking this position, and whenever I signed it, I'll be like, no, I'll just sign it right here. I'll just sign it right here. And they're like, no, you have to sign it on this line because this is where we have the print. No, no thanks. I'll just sign it over here. Why don't I sign it over here? Just like this idiot. Huh? So if this is the agent that's supposed to be witnessing, why is that empty? Because there is no witness. Because it's a joke. Right? Because everything they do is like that. That's exactly everything that they do. Oh, there's old Keith Stewart. So this is the guy, right? That is uh that made that put on his. I stood right in front of him, and talked to him. He fucking let me go, and now he has uh, he has this insanity. So here's a Tatina Long. This was May the first, right? Acknowledge and verify, please. Here's a, an email, May the first. This happened on June the 26th, so here two months before, my son, Robert James Harton, has granted me limited power of attorney within the scope of discussing, obtaining, gathering, collecting, transferring, and any and all records and or data slash information that I deem fit as long as it provides comfort, help, and or aid with any struggle between my son, Robert Harden, and all federal, state, and local agencies and corporations in all sectors, both public, government, and or private. If you would like the, to consent, if you, if you would like to contest my rights, then you are legally obligated to please view, and there is, whenever they click on that, it would have taken them to a video where I stand right in front of the video and I tell them because they were playing nothing but games and not giving me anything 
and telling them that I give her or grant her right and inform me when I finish. If you have any questions or concerns, you have three days to respond. Acknowledge and verify, please. Thank you. They just ignore it. Just ignore it. And then they try to fucking kill me. Hmm? Then they split my head open. Hmm? And then they just play every little game that they can. And it turns out that the guy that split my head open, he was arrested by the same guy that arrested me. That is, uh... And here's, this is the guy that split my head open. Alright. And here's his... Here's his uh, pre-trial plea and everything. And notice, not a single person, not a single person signed this. This is a one-man party right here. This is a one-man party. They got him signing it. There's no judge. There's no assistant. To, there's no defense attorney. Nobody else signed it. However, he did sign. And... They don't have, like, indecent exposure. They got them for indecent exposure. This is the guy that split my head. Okay, so. This is a 22-page affidavit notice of liability, right? Intended for self-defense and personal and this is uh, 22 pages long. And for every offense or action taken against me, $33 million shall be payable in silver dollar coin at face value and convertible at the law, legal and lawful ratio prescribed by law of 24 to 1 of Federal Reserve notes to silver dollars per person, per occurrence, per violation of the RICO Act of 1970 for fraudulently and unlawfully under color of law misguiding natural persons to believe that they are entities, corporate fictions, to gain access to their trust accounts for every offense. We are talking, if I, if I were to go and actually start putting out like lawsuits to all of what I've for each unsolicited or solicited phone call, ten thousand dollars. Right? For a letter of harassment, fifty thousand dollars. For each correspondent that I write to respondents and or agents, third parties or due letters of harassment or breach of the common law, I can use that one. And breach of the common law for each correspondence I receive from the commissioner's office. For each one that I write to the Office of Fair Trade, for each correspondent that I have to write to the Office of Fair Trade to try to get these assholes straightened out, I have fifteen thousand dollars for each correspondence I have write trade trading standards, and it goes on and on and on. And I have tried to outline, I tried to gather as many as I could, right. So I tried to imagine every potential way that they could try to screw me, and I tried to put it into this thing. For every... So there is a lot, a lot going on to this, and I will say that for nine, yeah, pretty ninety-eight 
99.9% of it is, uh, you know, like, I don't know. It, I don't know what they're doing. I guess for them, they can just do whatever they want because this is a private, they are a private court. They are a private corporation. And, uh, and, and they translate the laws. That's why I put all this in because I already know how screwed I, I was going to be. And then you got the affidavit of claim and title. So uh, that I, Robert James Hart, a natural born man of flesh and blood, here, hereafter a sovereign benefactor, styled the sovereign benefactor, does now and forevermore hereby state for the court of record his claim and title of all property for both himself as well as the homo stramineos, a.k.a. Robert James Harton Jr., and including any and all other associated variations, deviations, or derived versions of said name here, hereafter styled debt slave. As with all affidavits, any party who disagrees has 30 days to enter into a dispute by putting Robert James Harden on notice and providing sound, verifiable evidence point for point to support their counterclaim rebuttal. If hereafter, however, if however, Robert James Harden does not receive any evidence of a dispute, then on the 31st day after receipt of this notice, it shall be deemed now and forevermore that all statements herein shall be expressed as indisputable an undeniable recordable fact and robert james hart will never again have to be burdened with any and all principals agents employees or any other associated party or the like please be advised your silence is acquiescence therefore tacit agreement and apparently they're saying no it's not because they've uh and here's what i'm i, I you know but i guess they i don't know I guess because they have three days, and so maybe they're saying, um, because we put a warrant on and we just lied to, about everything, then we're telling you to take all of your affidavits and stick them right where the sun doesn't shine. So if you wanted a rebuttal, that's how we're going to rebut everything. We're going to tell you, you can shove it, and we're going to ignore everything, and then we're going to uh, hire, we're going to pull over somebody higher than to split your head right? and and have it so no there's no indication on who was involved like you know if I pull up his record who was the uh, who is attached with all of it is all empty what I showed you is is all the signatures are empty right? and so anyway um, private property list all proceeds from labor for uh, every source and products, accounts, fixtures, crops, mine heads, wheel heads, and transmitting utilities, etc. Uh, this is some um, listing all of my property that is all mine and all land in which the debt slave has an interest in. And this is stuff that I don't even have. I'm right? just this is setting it all, all up for the future because there's no doubt in my mind that that uh that, well they're sick. Okay, in every way, these people are sick. So all cottages, cabins, all bank accounts, foreign domestic banks, safety deposit boxes, credit card accounts, mutual fund accounts, stocks, bonds, securities, benefits for trusts, all inventories from all from any source, all machinery, either farm or industrial, all mechanical tools, construction tools, tools of trade, all boats, yachts, watercraft. Baggages, cargo, fucking bestowed, all motors, engines, uh, ans ancillary, uh, you know, all, I, everything, everything in the kitchen sink is, that I could think of, or find, or, you know, all animals, all farm livestock, stock, feeding, use, all pets, including cats, dogs, birds, fishes, and whatever other animals, and this is all because the state. All computers, flash drives, all visuals, all manuscripts, books, pro everything, everything is mine, basically. Discharge. I am telling the state every, 
and it's so hard for me not to be real. Every freaking all rights to exercise freedom of religion, worship, use of sacraments, all of my use of sacraments, spiritual practices, expressions within, any unabridged of abridgment of a free speech or a right to publish, all rights to peaceably assemble. Basically, all claims of ownership of the certificate corp. Oh, I got just about everything I can think of in 10 pages. If I'm missing anything, I would love for these people. All computers, artwork. Oh, speaking of, uh, we're looking for murder insurance, and, uh, you know, my mom hates the fact that I talk like this. However, you know, I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I, I want, I want murder insurance, so at least I can do, provide something with my worthless, worthless ass life. And, uh. affidavits motion to withdraw as counsel and here's what also upsets me well this really upsets me motion to withdraw as counsel motion to withdraw Darren J. Ray Attorney for Robert James Harton. Now he now he he can't even use the junior, and he doesn't have his little his little happy face, where he typically does. Okay. Is uh, and then look at the oh, right there, that's what he does. I don't know why. You would think that he so he's he's playing two parts here, it's some way. This right here is an indication to them because there's been quite a few times I've seen his signature like this and then quite a few times I've seen it like that. Attorney for defendant. However, he's not the attorney. He's the attorney of records, which is a big difference. Okay. And so, instead of the motion to withdraw as counsel, oh, and I like how he's requesting permission to withdraw from representing defendant. Is this not the lower case? Is this not the all uppercase defendant? This motion is based on a good cause in that there are problems arising from the defendant's inability to work with counsel. They're, he's saying that I'm incapable. Meanwhile, he didn't do a single thing for months, and I've never spoke to him. And he's also lying to me and shit. And he's also, and then so he says, order permitting him to withdraw as attorney of record. Right? So now he's calling himself just the attorney of record. And there's the signature for the attorney of record. And then... Certificate of service. A cert I certify a, that a true copy of the above motion to withdraw has been sent to the following in accordance with Texas rules of procedure on this 30th day. To Brett Lagan, I guess. Now he's the attorney, not not attorney of record. That that pisses me off. And then, motion to withdraw, and he has to tell Brett Ligon. Why is he asking Ligon if he can withdraw? Right? So why isn't the, uh, and then why isn't it, there's no proof that Ligon saw it. So, the only other thing that's left for this motion to withdraw
and then instead of giving the actual real motion to withdraw and handing it over and then and then Stewart Key Stewart put his signature on it and then they go in Key Stewart has his own little piece and he makes it a remove Derringer as attorney of record right this is just lame this nonsense And, and then they have that kid, uh, that kid only had the one, one date and he didn't have any, anybody sign it. And here there's no district attorney that signed it. I refused to sign it, but then they didn't tell me who and what had happened was on the first day, which this is August the 21st is the date on the first day, uh, Darren, this guy already wrote his signature and he wasn't at he was at some other person's and he doesn't you know they don't fill out all the time they don't fill out their, their stuff so he had already pre signed this or at least that's what they said and then some girl presented this to me and wanted me to sign that I must be present at all settings that I must sign notice of appearance at, at each setting and I didn't agree with that at the very first time, so I never signed. Defendant is so this. There's this asterisk here, and this is where they get you, like the uh, little this asterisk. Defendant acknowledges that he or she must appear at court each setting. Failure to appear will result in an order of arrest and forfeiture of bond. Right. And I guess because I never signed it the first time is what they're actually talking about. Because I never signed it. And I refused to sign it. And I swore. And who? And, and also, nobody else, like, they refused to sign it also. So if this asshole right here is going to refuse to sign it, and they want a piece of my, they want to put some butter on my bread, well, then I'm not signing it either. And if this guy wasn't present, to sign this in front of me, then I'm not signing anything either, and they don't like that because they because I'm supposed to just bow down. Right? So I did show up at this 9:30, 9 a.m. pre-trial in motions, but I did not show up at this 11:12. But I also didn't sign anything to promise to appear because technically I refused to sign and return according to schedule. Yeah. So what that means is according to schedule. So the next part of that schedule was this. I didn't assign according to every, all four days that's on this schedule. And I didn't sign. I just promised to reappear the one fucking time. I'm pretty certain, you know. So either way, here's another fact is that um, I didn't ever raise my hand. The judge raised his hand and started saying it. And I said, he asked me if I... If I agree, and I shrug my shoulders and I ask him, do, you, do I have any choice? He said, nope. And I said, well, then, I mean, you, then don't ask me. Don't ask me, dude. You know, stop playing these games with me, please. Now, order to withdraw. Oh, yeah, okay, this is what I was looking for. So, order granting withdrawal of can as counsel came on this day. To be heard, Darren J. Ray motion to withdraw as counsel for defendant Robert James Harton. The court has, having considered the motion, is of the opinion that said granted or denied. This, this is, this document means nothing. It was never signed. However, then they go, and this should be signed, and I want this one signed. However, there then they go, and they, uh, he makes his own other little one. And here's another thing is where is this order to motion to withdraw his counsel?
and this is missing one because there was a blue stein that came into the mix. And he motion five eight, yeah, there it is. Motion to and now this one doesn't even have Robert James, see. Now this one is just Robert Harton. Comes David Bluestein, court-appointed attorney of record in the above cause, and makes this his motion to withdraw in the above, before they had it above entitled, and now they're calling it above styled. I guess maybe they don't feel so goddamn entitled anymore after I served in my affidavits. And it's crazy because he was, this guy is who I met right after I handed in my affidavits and he started giving me a psychiatric evaluation, asking me psychological profiling, asking me all kinds of weird stuff. I said I wanted co-counsel and this idiot shows up and he's acting like he's my goddamn dad. Right? Asking me all these questions that are totally irrelevant. Anyways, um, court appointed counsel is changing employment with an anticipated start date of May the 18th and will no longer be able to represent the defendant in the above a case um, cause the defendant having been informed of the foreseen, foregoing has requested appointment of a new counsel. I've never, I, this is the first I even knew this. This is the first I've read this whole thing. And so... Um, the defendant having been informed, I never knew this. I didn't even know this fucking guy was here. It was still my thing. The defendant is entitled to be appointed another attorney who will effectively represent the defendant. This would be my third one, I guess, then. The defendant would benefit from appointment of a new attorney. The withdrawal, this withdrawal is sought for the, for this request. Respectfully, and there's another thing. Sign, no, dude. I, I don't. Somebody sign this thing with a pen. You sign it with a goddamn pen too, please. And I'm sorry. I, I swear. And I just so. And so, is this the same signature? Is that the same signature? Right, because it doesn't look like the same signature of stewards. So, what do we got here? We got um, motion to withdraw. No, we got right here. Order removing attorney. That's Keith Stewart's signature. And this is what? Is that Keith's? I don't know. Is that the same judge? I don't know. And I really like how they do everything behind my back and how this idiot says that he has a, he's a, never once did I talk to him. The last time I saw him, he was asking me weird ass questions on September the 30th after the clo court closed. He's asking me how, who, where I got married, how long I've been married, um, where I went to school, uh, how, what grade I graduated, all of this stuff. And I, we never even, and I just got up and I was like, Hey, I told him, I said, yo, dude, uh, we're getting way off base. I'm not here to answer questions to you. I'm here to operate, you know, personal questions. Like we're not on a date. This is not a Folgers moment here. Right. We're going to sit here and, and, uh, share lovely thoughts with one another. I got a job to do and I got things to do. So, and then he just kept playing games with me. So I just literally got up and walked away from him. He was like, hello, hey, and I'm just, I'm done, dude. I don't, I'm not, you know, nobody wants to argue with me. So don't mess with me. 
if you don't want to argue with me. The defendant is entitled. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're going to tell me what I'm entitled to do and shit. After I just told them my, uh, and, and where, where was my defense? Where was my, uh, where was David Bluestein to tell me after I just put, put in all those into the record, give me a call and say, yo, dude, uh, we're going to have a problem here because those aren't going to be good enough. And where was David Bluestein to make sure that, uh, there was no, there, there was no warrant placed on me. He didn't do anything. So anyways, I think pretty much that's all.